Transmission tower erection is a complex process that requires specialized knowledge, equipment, and skills. Tower erection is the process of installing power and communication towers, wind turbines, and other structures that require tall, sturdy support. It is a complex and technical process that requires specialized knowledge, equipment, and skills to ensure safe and reliable outcomes. With the increasing demand for power and wireless communication and renewable energy, tower erection is an essential service that plays a crucial role in connecting people and powering communities. There are four main methods of the erection of steel transmission towers which are described below. 1. Build-up method or piecemeal method. 2. Section method for tower erection. 3. Ground assembly method for tower erection. 4. Helicopter method for tower erection. Build-up method of transmission tower erection. This method is most commonly used in South Asia for the erection of 6.6 .6 kV, 132 kV, 220 kV, and 400 kV transmission line towers due to the following advantages. Tower materials can be supplied to the site in a knock-down conditions which facilitates easier and cheaper transportation. It does not require any heavy machinery such as cranes etc. Tower erection activity can be done in any kind of terrain and mostly throughout the year. Availability of workmen at cheaper rates. This method consists of erecting the towers, member by member. The tower members are kept on the ground serially according to the erection sequence to avoid search or time loss due to searching for them as and when required. The erection progresses from the bottom upwards. The four main corner leg members of the first section of the tower are first erected and guard off. Sometimes more than one contiguous leg section of each corner leg is bolted together at the ground and erected. The cross braces of the first section which are already assembled on the ground are raised one by one as a unit and bolted to the already erected corner leg angles. First section of the lower thus built and horizontal struts belt members if any, are bolted in position. For assembling the second section of the tower, two gin poles are placed one each on the top of diagonally opposite corner legs. In order to maintain speed and efficiency, a small assembly party can be sent ahead of the main erection gang for sorting out the tower members, keeping the members in correct position on the ground and assembling those panels on the ground which can be erected as a complete unit. Unit. The main corner leg members are prepared by fitting all cleats plates for joints and bracings and step bolts. The erection progresses from the bottom upwards. The four main corner leg members of the first section of the tower are first erected and kept in position by fixing temporary rope guys. Methodology Leg Erection To maintain speed and efficiency, a small assembly party can be sent ahead of the main erection gang for sorting out the tower members, keeping the members in correct position on the ground, and assembling those panels on the ground which can be erected as a complete unit. These two poles are used for raising parts of the second section. The leg members and braces of this section are then hoisted and assembled. The gin poles are then shifted to the corner leg members on the top of the second section to raise the parts of the third section of the lower in position for assembly. Gin poles are thus moved up as the tower grows. This process is continued until the complete tower is erected. Cross arm members are assembled on the ground and raised up and fixed to the main body of the tower. For heavier towers, a small boom is rigged on one of the tower legs for hoisting purposes. The members' sections are hoisted either manually or by winch machines operated from the ground. Methodology Body Erection For assembling the second section of the tower, the derrick gin pole is placed on the top of one corner leg. First, the leg members of the second section are hoisted and assembled. The temporary rope guys are shifted to the legs of the second section when they are being raised for erection. The legs of the the second section store is kept in position by fixing the temporary rope guys. The bracings of the second section are then hoisted and assembled. Cage During the work progress, it added another section of the gin pole while it remains fixed with the tower structure mounted up to that level. Parts of the structure are assembled on the ground and lift up at the position that, that has to be fixed. This procedure is used for every part of that level until we'll obtain the entire assembled level of the tower. In the same way, the gin pole after cage fixing can be used for cross arm erection. Cross arm erection. Cross arms are assembled on the ground. A rope is passed through a pulley fixed on the towering peak. 
The cross arms are raised up with this rope and fixed to the main body of the tower. Fastening The connection between profiles and plates will be realized through bolts, nuts, flat washer, and spring washer as per fine drawings. All nuts shall be tightened properly using the correct size spanners. Before tightening it should be ensured that filler washers and plates are placed in relevant gaps between members, bolts of proper size and length are inserted and one spring washer is inserted under each nut. In the case of step bolts, the spring washer shall be placed under the outer nut. The tightening shall be carried on progressively from the top downwards, care being taken that all bolts at every level are tightened simultaneously. For assembling the second section of the tower, the derrick the stages in this method of erection are shown in Appendix A and Appendix B. Cross arms are assembled on the ground. The bird guards and hangers for suspension towers are fitted on the cross arms. A rope is passed through a pulley fixed on the tower peak. The cross arms are raised up with this rope and fixed to the main body of the tower. The method of erection is shown in Appendix C. Section Method of Transmission Tower Erection In the section method, major sections of the tower are assembled on the ground and the same are erected as units. Either a mobile crane or a gin pole is used. The gin pole used is approximately 10 m long and is held in place by means of guys by the side of the tower to be erected. One side is held in place with props while the other side is being erected. The two opposite sides are then laced together with cross members and diagonals, and the assembled section is lined up, made square to the line. After completing the first section, the gin pole is set on the top of the first section. The gin rests on a strut of the tower immediately below the leg joint. The gin pole then has to be properly guided into position. After completing the first section, the derrick gin pole is set on the top of the first section. The derrick gin pole is made to rest on a strut of the tower immediately below the leg joint. The derrick gin pole has then to be properly guided into position. The first face of the second section is raised. To raise the second face of this section, it is necessary to shift the foot of the derrick gin pole on the strut of the opposite side of the tower. After the two opposite faces are raised, the bracings on the other two sides are fitted and bolted up. Ground Assembly Method of Tower Erection this method consists of assembling the tower on the ground and erecting it as a complete unit. The complete tower is assembled in a horizontal position on even ground. The tower is assembled along the direction of the line to allow the cross arms to be fitted. One slopping ground, however, elaborate packing of the low side is essential before assembly commences. After the assembly is complete the tower is picked up from the ground with the help of a crane and carried to its location and set on its foundation. For this method of erection, a level piece of ground close to footing is chosen from the tower assembly. This method consists of assembling the tower on the ground and erecting it as a complete unit. This method is not useful when the towers are large and heavy and the foundations are located in arable land where assembling and erecting complete towers would cause damage to large areas or in hilly terrain where the assembly of complete tower on slopping ground may not be possible and it may be difficult to get the crane into position to raise the complete tower. This method is not generally adopted because of non-availability of good approach roads to tower location. Helicopter Method of Transmission Tower Erection In the helicopter method, the transmission tower is erected in section. For example, the bottom section is first lifted onto the stubs and then the upper section is lifted and bolted to the first section and the process is repeated till the complete tower is erected. Sometimes a completely assembled tower is raised with the help of a helicopter. Helicopters are also used for lifting completely assembled towers with guys from the marshalling yards where these are fabricated and then transported one by one to line locations. A helicopter hovers over the line location while the tower is securely guide. Tightening of nuts and punching of threads and tack welding of nuts of transmission towers. All nuts shall be tightened properly using correct size sized spanners. Before tightening it is ensured that filter washers and plates are placed in relevant gaps between members, a bolt of proper size and length are inserted and one spring washer is inserted under each nut. In the case of step bolts, the spring washer shall be placed under the outer nut. Tightening of bolts and nuts and punching of threads. All empty holes are to be filled in with nut and bolt of appropriate size and a spring washer. 
All nuts shall be tightened properly using correct size spanners. Before tightening it should be ensured that filler washers and plates are placed in relevant gaps between members, bolts of proper size and length are inserted and one spring washer is inserted under each nut. In case of step bolts, spring washer shall be placed under the outer nut. Tack welding of bolts and nuts. Tack welding is got done of all the nuts and bolts from the ground level up to bottom cross arm level, or as specified in the contract. The threads of all the bolts projecting outside the nuts shall be welded with the nuts at two diametrically opposite places. Painting of joints of transmission tower. For galvanized towers as coastal or highly polluted areas, the joints shall be painted with zinc paint on all contact surfaces during the course of erection. Fixing of accessories. The U-bolts for earth wire suspension hardware are fitted on the top plate of the suspension towers. The supports for the anti-climbing device are fitted on the main corner legs of all the towers. The anti-climbing device's flats with edges cut to a sharp point are installed after the stringing work has been completed. Transversal and longitudinal verticality check. The verticality of the tower is checked using a theodolite placed away from the tower but in the longitudinal and transverse center lines of the tower. All towers shall be vertical within tolerance at the tower top of 0.3% of the tower height after conductors and earth wires have been clamped in. Bolts shall not be fully tightened until all members of a tower or all members of an independent subassembly have been fitted. Tack Welding All bolts and nuts at less than 3 meters above the ground shall be secured by tack welding the bolt threads at their emergence from the nuts in order to prevent pilfering. Each weld shall be brushed to remove traces of slag and coated with two layers of zinc-rich paint. Arc welding uses a welding power supply to create an electric arc between electrodes. As a result, the base material melts the metals at the welding point. Both alternating current AC and direct current DC can be used as a power supply for the welding unit.